Illegal land occupation is worrying residents of Marlborough Gardens. They claim people are occupying vacant land and connecting electricity illegally. They say the crime rate in the area has since increased drastically there. Yanka Tolme is covering that story for us this afternoon and joins us in studio for more on this. Yanka, just how many people are on this vacant, what, what was a vacant piece of land? It is difficult to say, but I have to say it has been expanding. If you look at, there's a couple of shacks talking about, let's say, about 50. But people are also actually now building houses. It's not just shacks being erected. It's actual bricks and cement being used to actually build the houses next to a lot of the, the actual houses that are in Marlboro Garden. So it is that, difficult to say, but it is expanding. That implies that this has been going on for quite some time now. So how long have these, when did the first group of people arrive? Let's put it that way. According to the residents, it started around in 2016, and then it was only a couple of uh, shacks, according to them. Uh, and then they said that that has been increasing since then for almost now three years. Uh, but the thing is also that the, some of the shacks have been demolished, or some of the, the structures have been uh, demolished by the JMPD in the past, but according to the residents, the material uh, is left there, and when uh, the JMPD, as soon as they leave, uh, the structures are then erected once again. Uh, same with the electricity, they illegally connect it. If it is cut down, as soon as the officials leave, they claim that they uh, reconnect. Even some of the residents say that their electricity bill has gone up to 5,000 rand a month uh, because of these illegal connections. Who owns the land in question? Is it owned by the city or is there a private owner out there somewhere who now has to deal with this problem? It is municipal land, and I've spoken to the JMPD, and they're saying that they are there illegally, and that's why they have been uh, asked to leave in the past, but they keep coming back. And that's why the residents now are saying that they feel kind of hopeless, uh, because they are now uh, being intimidated, according to them. Uh, they told me that the last time uh, the structures were demolished, uh, the people uh, came to them and accused them of calling the police, some of the residents, and they said that if something like that happens again, they'll burn down the houses. Uh, and that also led to one house being actually petrol bombed uh, last time. We've also seen that there was uh, debris in some of the roads around the houses. They said that there have been protests in the past as well, uh, but they say they are extremely scared. None of them wanted to speak to me uh, while you could see their faces. They wanted to, to stay anonymous. They didn't want to know uh, or to be able to identify the house. They didn't want us filming anything. So they are pretty shook up at this stage. You've spoken about the JMPD and they're not of the situation. Mm. Where are the other relevant city authorities who are supposed to be involved in such a dispute and what are they saying? Is a solution being sought, A, for the people who live in Marlborough Gardens who are unhappy with the arrival of the people who are building on the vacant land, and B, who is making a plan for these people who, as we know, South Africa has a housing crisis, so people generally don't just settle on land for fun it's yeah. because they need a place to stay. Well, I did uh, try and get in touch with the MMC and they asked uh, me to refer to the JMPD because it is an operational issue. So we are waiting for official uh, response from the JMPD. Uh, furthermore, I haven't been able to get hold of the ward councillor yet. Uh, we are, they have been in touch with them and they did show me some correspondence between the residents and the ward councillor. Uh, they, they, sh uh, sh they showed me an email that the ward councillor this morning said that he sent to the JMPD uh, raising concern about this but where exactly they want these people to go afterwards that still remains unclear. I have to add that what was interesting is there are chemical portable toilets uh, on this land and according to the residents they are being serviced but no one knows who is providing these chemical toilets and who's been servicing these. Uh, JMPD said that the city it's not the city of Johannesburg because they will not do that for illegally occupied land so there is quite a number of questions still surrounding this whole uh, vacant land that's being uh, occupied. But the thing is, the residents saying that no one is listening, they are hopeless. Uh, but as I've mentioned, these people might not have anywhere else to go. It sounds to me like there's a great deal of confusion on both sides here and the relevant authorities are simply not doing enough to take hold of the situation. Is that the impression that you got during your visit? 
Well, the fact that they've been there since 2016 and the fact that it's not just uh, uh, normal structures being uh, built or erected, it's actually now houses being built, the fact that it got to that stage and these people can just go ahead building houses, that seems to be questionable why nothing is being done, uh, why it, it has been allowed to go this far and why the JMBD, if they've been there, they had a court interdict or court order for them to demolish the shacks. How can it just suddenly then uh, pop up once again afterwards and, and the, you don't hear anything about it until the residents do raise concern. So it seems like it is a neglected part. It also falls under Santon. So the, the residents are saying they're paying a lot of rates, high rates and taxes, uh, but they're not getting the services. They're being forgotten. But the tension between the people of Marlborough Gardens and those who've now started building on the vacant piece of land is not going to die down because, as we were saying in the introduction, the Marlborough Gardens group is now accusing these new arrivals of essentially being criminals because they're mm. saying they've seen a spike in criminal activity since the arrival yeah. of these people. So what proof do they have? Because it's quite a big thing to link Yanka's arrival mm. to a spike in crime. I asked that as well, and they said that it is specifically since this area started ex uh, expanding when it comes to crime specifically, uh, but are, they are basing it more on, for example, the illegal electricity connections. They're saying that they're also using cables, which is clear that they had to steal somewhere else to then connect to electricity here. They also said that the people have come to them and told them that they have threatened them, according to the residents, and told them that they will uh, set their houses on fire. They were, uh, one house was petrol, petrol bombed and they said that they do know these people, they know what they look like, uh, so they, do, they have seen them in the streets busy with some of the criminal activities. Whether you can link it to actual uh, crime, meaning some of the house robberies that they've reported, obviously that can't be linked 100%, uh, but they're saying according to them it's definitely spiked since uh, these groups uh, have arrived and they also said that they, for example, there was a shootout in this community right there in front of them recently. So they, that, that's how they're linking it, basically. Right, ENC reporter Yanka Tolme, let's leave it there for now.